To demonstrate how SLPS works, I've set up a pulse waveform to drive an RC network filter using Capture PSPICE. I'll simulate this in probe and generate the waveforms. Then I will go into the simulant flow and bring the same pulse waveform in MATLAB. The SLPS block will represent the circuit that we have in PSPICE. I'll simulate this setup and get the same results for Simulink as I did in PSPICE. This is the capture RC circuit of a pulse waveform driving an RC network. The simulation settings have already been set, so I'll hit the run button to simulate the circuit waveforms. You can see the pulse waveform driving, the rising waveform on the output, and the current through the circuit displayed. Now we'll go over to MATLAB. In the command window, you'll notice that we have SLPS lib, which contains the examples that we'll be discussing. I'll double click on it and select the RC circuit example. In RC circuit, we have the same pulse waveform driving the SLPS block. The SLPS block refers to our capture circuit, so let's take a look at how that's referenced here. I'll go back to capture and bring up the SLPS settings window by double clicking on the SLPS block. In the Capture File Project text box, you see that we have the rcsir.opj, which references the project in the Capture Project Manager. The profile which we'll be using is tran.cir, which references the piece by drop down menu selection of rcsir-tran in Capture. Now, I'll bring up the schematic to show the VN input source that we're replacing with the Simulink VN input source. From the schematic, you can see that we'll be taking V at nodes 1 and 2 for our V1 and V2 outputs, as well as a current through the resistor IR. I could have also done this by hitting the select button to choose my parameters, but that's demonstrated in later examples. With everything set up, we'll return to our SLPS block where I'll hit the run button. The Simulink probe window opens, displaying the output waveforms. I'll bring up my piece by probe window alongside to show how both plots achieve the same results. Now to prove that this interface is really working and using the PSPICE engine, I'll go back to Capture where I'll change the capacitance from 0.1 to 1 Farad. Having done that, I'm not going to re-simulate this. Rather, I'll go to the Capture menu, select PSPICE, and create a netlist. I'll go to View Netlist to show that I've changed the capacitance in my netlist file. Now I'll re-simulate in SLPS and bring up my previous piece by waveforms where you can see that I'm getting different results. The waveform is rising slower and the current is different due to the size difference in the capacitor. Re-simulating in piece by shows that the simulant models are correct. Therefore we see that not rerunning the data and only creating a netlist gives us the same values that we saw in SLPS. This proves that the Simulink block goes to the netlist and co-simulates that data with PSPICE, working together rather than pulling data points from a plot.